just want to introduce Mark Martin, MBE. Have to put a little mention in there. Um, he's a, a person I grew up with uh, personally, and I'm you know very pleased to to, to have him here to to talk to the audience. Um, just want to just um, yeah, just to tell your story, give give a bit of your background, and and um, and go from there, really. So thanks, Ashley, for having me, and um, you know, a really pleasure to have the platform to share my experience as someone who you know we've grown up together, we used to walk home together, we used to enjoy walking yeah. home together <laughs> with, with, with a bunch of us telling you know just having fun, and um, yeah. So when I left school. Um, a secondary school in South London. Um, I, I I was really curious about computers and working in in, in the computing industry. Mm. And at the time, there was this massive thing around Cisco networking, and you know, uh, lots of um, excitement around how can we um, join the tech tech world. But I was yeah. working in a school at the same time, and I was doing a bit of uh, mentoring and youth work in that school. And everyone said, "Mark, man, you, you're really good at working with young people." So why don't you connect your degree, which is in technology, and also, um, you know, become a teacher, teaching it. Yeah. So I said, OK, cool, because at that time I saw my pairs make, getting all of this money and um, they were making lots of money in being a teacher. And I was just this mentor and I thought, hold on a sec, <laughs> I, I can make a bit more money if I just become a full fledged teacher. And then, you know, get paid that 30K salary, what everyone else yeah. is getting compared yeah. to 18K. And then, you know, fast forward now, 16 years later, working in education, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a real experience. And yeah. um, it's been, it's been an eye opener. I think if I could do it again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change this career for, for nothing. I think I've, I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot about um, society. I've learned a lot about this digital tech transformation. And one of the key things that I found with this digital transformation is that you know, society is changing. Life, things are changing around us quite quite rapidly. And, you know, as someone who is in the know-how of how technology works and how it operates, I just felt that my, my calling in education was much more than just teaching in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So I was able then to, you know, take a step out of the classroom and travel the world and to work with different tech companies, work with different communities to really understand what it, does it mean to really upskill people? What does it really mean to look at communities that don't have access to technology or to tech careers? And what is the future of work? What does that actually look like? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of been like a whirlwind tour for me. But ultimately, if you said, what do I do in this space? I think it's about empowering that next generation to understand the opportunities that exist in their doorstep. Because more and more, what we're starting to find in local areas is the hipsters are moving in there and they're setting up all these amazing tech companies in Brixton. If you go down Brixton now, you'll be surprised how much like tech hubs, tech spaces, all of these things that are accessible to people, but they walk past every day, probably not knowing yeah. that these opportunities exist on their doorstep. So yeah. one of my kind of challenges in life is to really upskill and to help people to understand that, that change that's happening in that local area. Okay. Okay, no, that's 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 really good, man. And um, and you were saying earlier that you were working in a in a school, and then you were hearing about you know the Cisco systems and all the the sort of money that was involved in that. But what got you into teaching in the first place? Because you could have just taken a technology, you know, got your technology qualifications, for example, and then just gone into the city or whatever else. Like, what sort of drew you into getting into education in the first place? So I was really privileged at the time. So I was, lot, I, you know, representation is key because a lot of people say, well, Mark, um, you know, when I was in school, if anyone asked if I wanted to become a teacher, I'd probably say no, not in, not in a million years. Because <laughs> in school, I didn't, I didn't even see education as a key for me. I didn't really see it as an opportunity. Mm. So only when I left school and I started to realise that you know, to open up doors, to get through certain places, you need to have education as um, a, a tool to access certain things. Yeah. So, so having that kind of desire to learn these skills and to learn these tools to open up certain doors, um, 
it, it, was, it was a no-brainer for me. So if we say education is the key and I've got one of those keys now and we're saying tool, a technology is the key, I've got two keys on, my, uh, on me to open yeah. up a lot of doors and to lo open up a lot of opportunities. Yeah. But also, I think that there was a lot of um, black teachers around at the time too that kind yeah. of encouraged me. So they took me to one side they kind of said, you know what, Mark, man, there's, there's not a lot of us in this industry. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, by having that representation, because in, in the UK currently, we represent probably, um, you know, 0.1% of the profession at 1.2 million teachers. Right. And, you know, 20% uh, of the, the profession is men, 80% is women. Yeah. And when we think about the, 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 the odds, I'm, I'm like a small speck. Yeah. within this education system. So understanding, you know, me as an individual, being a, you know, a young black man at the time and having people that were inspiring me to, to pursue this uh, career, I, I, you know, I took it with, all, with, with, with both hands and I haven't looked back. So, yeah. Okay. And what do you feel, did you feel that there were any barriers to you entering it? So, you know, you're talking about doors opening. Like, did you feel like there are any barriers to you entering that field? Are there any sort of challenges that you might want to share? Yeah, so the, the barriers that you normally face is uh, getting a school. Um, so what you'll find is that a lot of the challenging schools is where a lot of the black teachers are because probably the, the schools that are, you know, back then, that were well off and you know had high, like lots of uh, expensive equipment and yeah. resources it's very teachers didn't want to leave and you yeah. know and and in our let, let's not let's not uh, bat, uh, beat around the bush our professions a lot of white middle class uh, women yeah and and being in a field where you know you're you're stacked up against the odds a lot of the teachers and where we got opportunities was in challenging schools. Now, yeah. the barrier, the, I don't think there was a barrier for myself as such entering into the profession, but it's about then like getting into management, getting into like responsibilities, doing stuff in schools that's going to be acknowledged and recognised. Yeah. And a lot of times what, we, what I found when I was working in schools they wanted to put me in like behavior management. They wanted me to, you know, right. discipline the kids or show them some tough love and, you know, yeah. be their bouncer. But yeah. I never went down that path. I, I, I made sure that I, I stayed a specialist for technology and I kept true to my roots because, right. you know, what you're finding in life is that these young people are being bounced a lot in society. So why am I going to join a, 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 a profession to be a, more of a bouncer for them? Mm. Why can't I inspire them with the skills and um, the insights I have on this yeah. amazing, exciting set of technology? So that was one of the, the always the pull in the, the character. Like, Mark, you're really good at behavior management. You should go into, like, you know, doing stuff in the SEN and, 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 and with the, the SEN department. But no, no, yeah. I want to focus on my subject and become a specialist in that. Yeah. So it was really, yes, yeah, so that, that was really interesting what you said because it, it really just sounded like you just wanted to you zoned in on what you wanted and you you stuck to that you know you stuck yeah. to that mantra at the end of the day because you'll get people that will try to like influence you to go to a certain path but it just sounds like i guess if you if you know it sounds to me anyway if, if you know hearing what you're saying that if i was to give advice to someone else it would be to be clear on your goals and you know, yeah, yeah, you've got to define yeah, yourself yeah. before you let anyone else define you. That's one yeah. really important thing in life. You've got to make sure that whatever you set out to do in life, make sure you're very clear around that. Get some people that will hold you to account. Get some people that will motivate you. Get some people that, you know, who've gone down that path that you haven't gone. Mm -hmm. And I was really fortunate that when I was starting my career, I had a range of different people um, support. I had, a, I had a nice ecosystem. Yeah. And for anyone listening in and thinking about, you know, you're, 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 join, you're just about to join a, a career or you're, just, uh, you're going for a new change, create an ecosystem. Because yeah. sometimes on your, day, your darkest days, you need to have a support system around you that's able to build you up, motivate you, and, and really keep you focused on why you, you're actually doing the things that you're doing. Yeah. And... What would you, um, how would you compare things now in terms of 
you know, ethnic minorities entering the technology sector to when you've entered the sector? Because that, you know, yeah, yeah, good, your good. age, but that's a while ago. Yeah, good question. <laughs> so, so at the moment, um, so I, I've set up this organization called UK Black Tech. Yeah. And um, we, 11 of us came together from the tech sector to really think about what is the future of technology? And in that future of technology, do uh, black innovators and technologists have a narrative in that? And most people at the time felt, Mark, you know what, We're, we are thinking about diversity and inclusion and we want to see greater representation in that. But my question was, is that, do we see ourselves in the future of these uh, tools and products? And um, yeah. fast forward now, we're starting to see like algorithms that are excluding like people of color or algorithms that are biased towards people of color because probably the people that are designing it don't have enough uh, diverse team. And, and also the people that were predicting the, the, the technology back then when I first started out thought that it would just be probably male dominated and it would work for everybody else included. So they, yeah. they thought that they could bake out this technology. So what my organization wanted to do is to say that let's bring some of these hidden figures who've always been in here, like that, you know, I, I was in um, Silicon Valley having a story around when Apple and um, Microsoft were first starting out and working in Silicon Valley was a, it was a predominantly African-American area. And yeah. a lot of the, the, the blue collared workers, the workers working in factory were black people programming, code and so forth. But if you told people that, you know, people are like, what are you talking about? Yeah, they've been there since the 1960s and 70s yeah. in Silicon Valley programming and coding. So it's yeah. until like you know, um, you know about these things, then you can yeah. feel actually we have been here, but we haven't been like no like music like hip hop yeah. or, uh, or 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 kind of like um, uh, entertainment. We're not at the forefront of these things. You can't see us. Yeah. And where you can't see us, you think that we don't exist. Don't, don't do so it. that lack of representation in the industry, yes, there is a very few of us in the industry, but there's lots of technologists. There's lots of creators. If you just look at social media and go to your, whether you want to go to Instagram, Twitter, there's a lot of us on there creating content, producing content. But ultimately, if we're not the people also having a stake of how this future looks for technology, Mm -hmm. then, you know, it's going to cause us problems and it's causing us now problems because probably back then it wasn't diverse. So for me, my organisation tries to raise that representation, tries to get more homegrown talent in. So whether it's going into school, supporting university students, um, highlighting people across our platform, that's what we're all about. So do you, so how, how does UK Black Tech work then? Do you go into like, you know, education institutions yeah, so, and yeah, where, so, where do you sort of get your audience from? So we've, we've organically grown in the last three years. We right. first started out as this like networking group and then it grew. Yeah. Like, we, like it was a networking group where we used to hold tech events of like, what's the future of machine learning? What's the future of data science? Yeah. And then we keep we keep to like our, our success then led us to like thinking around we done an event on like a sickle cell. All right. And okay. we brought doctors, patients, scientists, data scientists to look at sickle cell against a European disease. And at the end of that event that we done, people were crying and said, Man, this is the first year, first time in like since I've been alive where a group like yourself have come and brought some innovation to our illness. Right. So we looked at ourselves and said, Wow. Imagine how much other things are not being discovered because yeah. it's not being done with a cultural lens. It's yeah. just been done on this profit. We, we need to like make lots of money, scale it, become the next Mark Zuckerberg or Google <laughs> right. and, and just make lots of peace. But actually, this tech can be helping and solving a lot of today's problems depending on who you ask. Yeah. And I think at the moment, there's a lot of this big narrative in um, technology that it's all about just making money. Actually, no, yeah. it's about making a better future too for yeah. everybody that lives on this earth. So the, the way UK Black Tech has grown is that we first was trying to do this representation thing, but now we kind of see ourselves as an innovation group. We, yeah. we, we work on those biggest problems in, in the world, where, wherever that is. My, we've got technologists from all over the country and 
now in Europe and now in US that will keep on growing. We've just set up an innovation hub in London. So, you know, if you're an innovator, you're a technologist and you want to share your work, you can do that for our platform. Um, we, we, we work with universities, so we help their university students connect to the tech sector. Yeah. Uh, we work with digital businesses, so we work with four boroughs at the moment, supporting startups who want to create a, you know, a, a tech business. And then we work with the corporate world, so we work a lot with uh, the big companies thinking yeah. about digital transformation across the um, whole of the country. So right. it's kind of grown from this kind of group that spoke about tech to now we're just hands-on in tech, changing the game, changing the narrative, yeah. and way beyond the call of just saying that we just need more people of uh, colour in tech. So it, currently, would you say, are there any barriers to entry for ethnic minorities? Yeah, what, I think there that? is. I think it's about awareness. Yeah. As I said before, like, in Lambeth, you've got one of the biggest tech in Lambeth in South London, you've got one of the biggest yeah. tech companies in the world. But if you ask people like where is it and what is it, they don't know. <laughs> oh, no. And it's IBM in Waterloo. Yeah, yeah that's what it's true. It's, it's you the know, biggest it's, yeah, tech it's company. Great. It's probably in all your household items and you just don't yeah. know that this company exists on your doorstep. So yeah. one of the biggest barriers at the moment is awareness. The second biggest barrier is around perception. Right. So when these, uh, you know, black uh, homegrown talent comes into the company, are they perceived to be the innovators or the, the people that can bring change and, and drive productivity and growth in the organization? Yeah. And if you don't see them, you just think, oh, I just give them a little job and they'll be fine. They'll be happy. And we've we've tick boxed our diversity quite and we're happy. Right. So the barrier is around um, one, around awareness, around perception. And then also it's about um uh pay right okay so when they do come in are you going to pay them the same what i know what i know what everyone else is getting so there's this uh, uh pay uh inequalities that exist and you might say mark so you know what do you fight for for uk, UK black tech life is simple we're just fighting for that make sure that you pay homegrown talent uh what everyone else is getting yeah and make sure that, you know, you, you give them the same benefits that you give everybody else in the workplace. And that's two simple requests. But what we find for our research and what we find for our data, sometimes that's a mixed picture depending on who you speak to. Right. You know, not everyone's getting the same opportunities. Not everyone's getting the same funding. Not everyone's getting the same heads up. So would you think that that could be down to... Because, for example, when I've ever gone into a workplace myself, I always negotiate my salaries. I'm just kind of used to doing that. And then what I would do is I would research the market and get an understanding of what the, you know, the base level is and what someone with my skills and attributes should be able to um, earn. So is there like an area around where, you know, there could be education around that? Because maybe they just don't know what they're worth for example, and it's not... Yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think, I yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's part of the problem. I think, one, they don't have the, um, uh, the probably the vocabulary to, to negotiate or to even ask, like, uh, but then again, I, I probably even wouldn't say that. I think companies just need to be more transparent and clear in terms of how they pay and progress people with an organization because yeah. I met someone who's been in a tech company for 15 years yeah. and they haven't been spoken about promotion, nothing. They've just been right. doing the same old job. And when you look right. at their counterparts, they're now senior VP, senior directors. They've gone higher up in the organization. Yeah. And sometimes in organizations, you need people that are sponsors, that people that are advocating for you when you're not in the room or mentors, that people can help you along the way of your journey. So I think that in terms of like the barriers, the barriers is 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 is, is, is sometimes um, intentional. But let me just put a disclaimer in. When we yeah. talk about barriers, I'm not talking about individual person that's a bias of yeah. got, you've got some racist tendencies or yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about a structure or an uh, or systematic structure that even if those people left that system still continues regardless, no matter what. That's the thing that UK Black Tech challenges. We don't challenge, you know, we, we do sometimes challenge the individuals, 
but we're more concerned about this structural thing that is there and it's hidden, but it still manifests and it's still held high because no one is ready to dismantle it or to even say, let's challenge it. Why is it the fact is that we haven't, we're not, we're not being transparent with people's pay? Why is it that, um, you know, when we look at technology, there's discrimination in it? So that's what we really advocate for and what we try to do. Okay. And then where would you say, when you, when you speak about the, the structure, I don't know if you can expand on that a bit further. So like when you say there's a sort of systematic structure in place, like do you, do you think it's there to like discriminate against particular groups or do you think it's just a symptom of how the industry is just structured in general? I, yeah, I think it's the way that it's the, it's the way the industry has been all in structured for a long time, and I think the way it is structured is that you know it promotes and uh, serves a particular a group of people, whether that's you know um, them getting the promotions, them uh, you know not being harshly treated in in certain situations, or you know the um, the, the way the, the way the company treats them. And, and gives them belonging. And what you'll find is, is that any company, you, you just see how, just ask the staff, do you feel that you belong here? Do you feel that you're, you know, you're part of the, the, the culture? Do you feel that you can air your views? And what we find with a lot of minority groups is that they leave their identity at home. They leave, their, um, they leave themselves at home to come into work to conform to a system that, you know, whatever professional is, I don't know what the word, professional is something that I still struggle with even being a professional myself is yeah. it being um you know Eurocentric in the way we we act and conduct ourselves is it about being you know um submissive to whatever it is what is it do you need to be your authentic self in a workplace and also be acknowledged regardless of what the bigger system has placed for you or has 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 structures for you in that context. So it yeah. goes back to what I was saying earlier. You've got to define yourself. You've got to kind of think about what do you want to get out of this, or you'll yeah. just be molded into something. And again, you're 15 years later. How come I haven't been promoted? How come I haven't you know gone up in the in in the company? So what? So if if you're speaking to a young, <laughs> well, a young me, a young Ash, and I'm looking to get myself into tech now. What would what advice would you give me, considering what you've just said about um, you know uh, structures in place and things like that? Yeah. So one of the things I'll say is that look for companies that believe in you, and there's lots of companies out there that want to believe in you and invest in you, and that have got a vision for you. Mm -hmm. um, I think long gone are the days where you're just going to a company and put your head down. I think companies have got a responsibility now to make sure that um, their staff feel that they belong to the culture and to the organization. Um, companies have got a responsibility to make sure that, you know, they've got a clear career path for you. So if you do this for two or three years, we're happy to promote you up into something else and so forth. So I think it's about telling that young Ash, ask more questions about what you want to get out of this experience, yeah. you know, and how is the company going to invest in you as an individual to really, uh, you know, uh, bring about some real change? Yeah. I mean, what I would say from my um, perspective, just coming up the career ladder myself and then just setting up a couple of um, businesses myself is that what I always advise people is, look, you need to, it's kind of similar to what you're saying, really, is to take take individual responsibility for your career and your performance because you can't expect someone else to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself so like for example like if i am like working in a, a firm and i'm doing what i need to do to get by and i'm just sort of sitting there you know not saying that you're not working hard or anything like that yeah. but you're just sort of going through the motions you know coming to work every day doing what you need to do you're not necessarily gonna stand out so are they gonna come and give you that promotion whereas if you are you know you're upskilling you're always looking to upskill yourself you're always requesting training you're trying to go yeah. over and above i think there's you, most you definitely I always told people i always told young people and people that work in uh, industry test because some people say mark how do you know when you've been discriminated against or when yeah. you're, you're facing barriers <laughs> yeah 
I used to be a raver back in the day. <laughs> and you might go to a club and they might say no trainers. You might say, all right, yeah. cool. Yeah. Go home, you put you, you put your shoes on, you come back and you, you show your shoes. And if they say, well, you know, um, we did say no trainers, but you need shoes and a shirt. So you go home, okay, no problem. Go home, you change your T-shirt, you put your shirt on, you wrap back up there. And they say, well, Even yeah, sorry, <laughs> no girls. So you go home, you, 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 you phone two girls up, you come with your shoes, your shirt and girls, and they say, you know what? It's only a uh, VIP only tonight. So you know, it's a membership club and, you know, we only take payments from last week. So yeah. until you, if you've kicked off because, you know, uh, of the trainer situation, yeah. then you don't know what, the, what it actually is. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You probably yeah. missed something in there. But if you keep on doing the same thing, yeah. And you've tested it. Yeah. Then you know that there's some sort of uh, uh, biases that is happening to you and you need to deal with it accordingly. So yeah. that's how I always say to people, challenge challenge some of those things. Um, and then also um, make sure that, you know, you hold yourself to account. Make sure you've got a professional yeah. portfolio. You've got a technical portfolio. You know, yeah. brand yourself. There's so many things that you could be doing in the interim. No organization is going to brand you better than yourself or yeah. going to promote you better than yourself or advocate for you better than yourself. And, you know, long gone are the days where you think that I'm going to skill myself up in a company. You've got to skill yourself up. So whether you put two hours aside to do what LinkedIn Learn or uh, Udemy or whatever, do some courses, get your skills up, get in there so you know what you're doing. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. I mean, no, I'm a big advocate of just... I'm all about that, yeah, that individual, um, I think you disappeared just there. Think, yeah, uh, sorry, sorry, I think my um, internet oh. is <laughs> You're a technologist, man. Yeah. <laughs> I have to cut that bit out. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? No, I mean, when I was, um, I had a little story, actually, it, it came up the other day. Because um, I remember I did um, work experience at the uh, Ministry of Agriculture. And um, I was work working in their research um, uh, department in Whitehall. And then um, there was a time that I was meant to go to a, a meeting with one of the directors. And then um, on the way to the meeting, um, he had a bereavement. And then I got a call as I was getting to the, um, to the meeting to say, look, he suffered a bereavement and whatever else. Um, and yeah, you should just come back to the office. We won't expect you to go there alone. But then what I said, I said, no, I want to go to the meeting and I'll take notes and I'll come back and report what happened because it was a Department of Trade and Industry meeting. It's actually an important meeting. So I said, OK, now I'll go there anyway and I'll take minutes and I'll make a report and, and, and come back. And then what happened as a result of that and just from the, um, the general, you know, just my general work ethic, because I was always looking to go above and beyond. What happened was is that they ended up um, putting me in the in their newsletter under the title Alexander the Great. <laughs> and then they were talking about all the things that I did on the work experience. And then it was recommended that they expand it across the whole of the Ministry of Agriculture, which ended up happening. So then hundreds of other kids then got the opportunity to go in and showcase what they can do. So, like, I know that you know, these, you know, things exist like racism and all that sort of thing. I don't, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> we grew up, you know, we know what it's like, but I always, in my mind, say to myself, okay, but am I going to let that be a barrier to my success, to my results? And what I want to ask you is, do you feel that it's a barrier to someone's success or do you feel they can overcome, overcome those, um, views basically because because it's, it's 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 views it exists yeah so so one of the things that we've learned through this pandemic of covid19 is that there's also a pandemic of racism and you know what what i find a lot in this industry is that um uh, white people don't want to talk about racism because they don't want to be seen to be a racist mm -hmm. uh, black people don't want to talk about racism because career suicide or it might you know jeopardize their next move within the organization and then what happens is, is that this vacuum starts to uh, emerge for the next generation. Because if the people at the top who are black are not talking about it and the people that are white are not talking about it, our young generation 
are looking at us thinking, what the hell's going on? Who, what, you know, is there an issue? And if there's an issue, how do we kind of tackle it? How do we, we you know, tackle it head on? And, you know, when we saw the, the death of George Floyd this year, that got a lot of people talking and having very uncomfortable conversations, whether it was in schools or in institutions. And then, you know, what was really fascinating is this, that a lot of the Black and African and Caribbean community started then to share some of their um, experiences of racism mm -hmm. in, in society and how it's affected them in their day-to-day -day life. Now, in terms of, like, um, how do we kind of navigate in a system that is sometimes uh, not fair, not equal, and, yeah, it, 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 we, we can say it's, it's got a lot of... Um, uh, uh, institutional racial issues going on, whether it's stopping search or, you know, whether, again, you're going for a job and you've got an African or uh, uh, a Muslim sounding name and you have to, you know, hide your surname to get a job uh, and, and, and so forth. So you can ignore it to some extent, but also we've got to have these hard conversations. Those people that have got platforms and, are, you know, can speak voice, uh, speak uh, speak truth, speak truth in, in what they do. And I think that, you know, since the death of George Floyd, I think people have been become more bold to challenge the status quo, to, st to, 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 to challenge their bosses or to, to challenge the media or to, to challenge the institutions or to challenge the different sectors. And we've done that heavily in the tech sector. So, you know, um, we said to the tech sector, like, listen, we're not begging you to accept us into this industry. Mm -hmm. You want the best tools and products and services. All you've got to do is make us involved in the process so that it doesn't end up killing or harming someone in the future. It's a simple thing. Or you face us leaving this country and we go elsewhere. So it's one of these things where if, the, if, the, um, if society listens to that cry, because we're not asking for too much. We're just asking, as I said before, we're just asking for equality here. We're making sure that things are transparent, it's fair, it's equal. Um, and, 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 and when we do have problems, it's taken seriously because a lot of times when people raise these issues around racism, it's very uncomfortable. People don't want to talk about it. People want to sweep under the carpet. But no, let's have a conversation about it. it. Might open up your eyes to things that you probably were doing as an organisation or as a group that was um, excluding other people from that access. So for me as an educator... I feel that it's my duty to talk about racism. Why? Because these are the same young generation that we're going to put, we're going to rule this world one day. And mm -hmm. if they haven't had that firm knowledge or understanding of what these things look like, whether they're going to their jobs, whether they're going to technology, whether they're going to whatever field they're going to, they will challenge the status quo to make sure that we've got a fair and inclusive society. So that's my kind of. Uh, look on it when I when I look mm. on on this uh, conversation here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I I hear what you're saying as well. I mean, I think that I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit. I'm a different kind of thinker, really. I guess. I mean, the way the way that I look at stuff is that, like, for example, like I can look at you and say, all right, I I feel more superior to you, and that's my viewpoint, right? But then. Do you need to take that on as your mentality, if that makes sense? So do I need to but, allow you to yeah, have that I, power I think, over you? I think what it is is that not everyone, you see how you think, yeah? Yeah. You're on your own mountain climbing up. Everyone's got a different height and a mountain yeah, and yeah, different yeah, tools, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. different equipment, different yeah. support networks. Some people got walkie talkies. Some yeah. people have got helicopters yeah. guiding them. Some people yeah. have got all different things guiding them on their mountain. Yeah. I always used to think that everyone's climbing up the same mountain. Mm. But it's not. Everyone's climbing up their own different path on that. Yeah. And I just think that, you know, people deal with um, uh, perception differently. So yeah. for me, I can walk in any room and feel confident in my own skin to say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Listen, yeah, I can yeah. talk my truths, I can be yeah. myself, and if I can't be myself, this might not be the right space or place or, you know, there's an issue here. Yeah. Where some people might not be able to do that because they probably haven't, you know, built, had that encouragement or to, you know, had that kind of um, support network to do yeah. that. Yeah. So I think that 
I think obviously I, I know people like yourself will be very strong in, in, in that sense, but yeah. a, lot, a lot of that, and especially younger generation, are weak, and we're starting to see it yeah. through yeah. social yeah. media yeah. and yeah. mental health, yeah. that yeah. a lot yeah. of them can't cope with the things that we were able to cope with back yeah. in the day. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, exactly. And that's what you... This, this, this is the thing. This, that's what you captured, because I look at someone like yourself, because we only grew up a road away from each other. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, you know, I look at someone like yourself and all the things that you've achieved and you would have faced a lot of the same problems that people are facing, you know, that people, well, that we've been facing for a long time, really, and will continue to. But what is the difference between you, because we can come from the same place, but what's the difference between you getting to where you're getting to and then maybe me living a road away from you um, not being able to navigate through it. So yeah, I think as I said before, it just depends on your environment, depends on your your support network system. It depends if you've got people advocating for you. So what you'll find is, is that um, even in the community that we lived in, there was people rooting for us. Yeah, you know, there was people telling us not to, you know, yeah, go yeah, down that path exactly. or to, yeah, to yeah. pursue that particular lifestyle. And they would drum into your to your mind every day not to do that. Oh, you've got an option. Everyone's got choices. So they gave us the option and choice. I just think that um, uh, the, the, the youth culture of today, um, due to social media and uh, music and, yeah. and, and that type of way, it's done in the way like microwave. So you can pop it in a microwave for 30 seconds and, yeah. and off you go. You can, yeah. you can live that fantasy. Yeah. And we were in a culture where it was more like putting it in an oven and waiting, <laughs> and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting until, you know, it materialised and it worked for you. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think even that older generation had the oven mentality culture where, yeah. you know, you put it in and it's a long graph. It's a long, yeah, it's a long yeah, hustle. Yeah. yeah. But where this young generation have been kind of, they've grown up in this microwave way of doing stuff. Yeah. And they're starting to see all of the shiny, the bling, the, the, the kind of attractive culture that you see through social media. They feel that it's, it can easily be obtained. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the problem. But with us, we know that, like, if I went to, you know, go down that path, that, that shiny bling culture, I know that's probably going to take me 10 years, realistically. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to take me a, a month or two to yeah. get there. Yeah. So I think that. The, their expectation of today is much more different and the environment is much more different. Yeah. That's why, as I said before, we need to show our, uh, our young people not the face-to-face -face stuff. We need to show them the free, like the, the, the 50,000 feet view so they can see, yeah. like, no, like when you see something from 50,000 feet view, you're like, whoa, I didn't even yeah, know there was a, 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 a pond there or there was a road down there or there was some a part there or districts and so all the kids are just saying is what's in front of them yeah and what in front of them might be positive or negative but it's it's kind of tunnel vision into a certain way of thinking and believing yeah. their own abilities yeah and, and that's, yeah yeah no that's it no sorry i mean that that's that's part of what i'm trying to do is just to capture that mentality that example just being an example and trying to capture that mentality to impart onto others obviously then it becomes that their choice obviously that's what it boils down to so when we were having a conversation off camera i was talking about choice because we all make a set of choices do you know what i mean so it's like yeah i'm looking at myself and i look at you and i think to myself okay how can we just get that message to those, you know, to you know, to, to, to people thinking in a different way that maybe they don't have the confidence or they're, um, yeah, they're struggling to see. Uh, like, uh, how do we get that message? It's to interesting. Them? You, it's interesting. You're thinking like this, and 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 you know, you've got that desire in your heart to to really enlighten people mm. um, and bring people together to really, um, you know, chop some game up. Yeah. Um, the 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 issue is is that. I've taught like nearly probably probably about thirty thousand young people in my lifetime. Yeah. yeah. And my heart's desire is to make sure that they all leave with a qualification or they leave yeah. with something. Yeah. That is tangible. That's going to help them. 
And it's like the old analogy that you can take them to the to the to the river, but they might not drink. No. Yeah. Yeah. So you can give out all of the the, the, the top gems in this world. You can even probably yeah. tell people like how to become successful, how to live a, like a balanced life uh, yeah. in relationship, finance, uh, mental health, all of that stuff. Yeah. But until you're willing to engage. Mm. Or if you're, or, or you, you, you have a sense of humbleness or humility, yeah. then you can receive the message. Yeah. Now, with all this noise that's going on and goes back to choices and options and so yeah. forth, it's very hard because everyone's got an option. So, back in the day, <laughs> I, I, I tell a lot of people this, and not, not to go off the topic too much about relationships. No, 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 that's, that's, that's fine. Yeah. When you think about, um, you know, relationships and you think about, you know, back in the day, it was like meeting um, people in the sh- like, whether it's in your in your day to day walking down a road, and you might see some might go, you might holler at them, you might holler at a woman yeah. or something. Yeah. Now you're, you're you're doing it in through like online dating apps where you yeah. can just swipe yeah. and you've got options. Yeah. It's yeah. a numbers yeah. game. If you swipe a hundred, one might like you, and if you don't like that one, you can keep on swiping. Yeah. Yeah. And this is society that we live in now, where yeah. we've got more options. And, 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 and even when you look at, um, let's give another analogy. Look at um, Facebook when it first started. It was designed to help people on the campus uh, come together and communicate. Yeah. yeah. I guarantee you that the African-Americans didn't have a problem of bringing a party together, bringing people together <laughs> at the time. They didn't need that technology. Because once you put a flyer in a, the common room or the... The, the you know the the union route people are going to yeah. come to it it's going to be yeah, off the yeah, hook yeah, yeah yeah of course 20 years later guess who doesn't who's moving away from the technology the same people that created the technology don't use it no more yes the people yeah. that weren't using it is now addicted to it yeah yeah <laughs> so when we look at like human behavior and and um you know how time evolves through some of this thinking of enlightening people yeah very complex it's very um you know it's very it's it's it's, it's very mystified in a, in a lot of ways but mm. you know you put, someone might look on this in the next probably 10 or 15 years and it might click for them yeah yeah no no it's true yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no it's true they might click in the next 50 years when we're long gone or you know what i mean or the next 100 years no no it's true no and no that, like, yeah. yeah you know that's how life works and messages work you know, mm. so I, I, w- I would definitely always, I, I don't put pressure on myself to even tell the young people that I want to earn a qualification. If you want to earn it, it's there. I'll yeah. try my best to get you through to get it. Yeah. But there's only so much I can do. Exactly. Yeah. It's just, for me, it's just um, getting people to understand that they have the opportunity do you know what I mean? I'm so not even registering that. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't reg- that doesn't even register. That's the crazy thing because, like, because you know, like normally, like, because you were saying earlier, everything is about getting everything quick now, fast, and 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 all that kind of thing. But like, no one talks about just moving from A to B. You know, like just from moving from I don't know stacking shelves to being the supervisor. Well, you know, so, taking so, that so, one step said- forward. But if you look at society, everything is fast paced now. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. felt that these, um, the technology, we felt that the technology, people were scared that, oh, you know, the technology is trying to control us through monitoring our data and our be- behaviors and habits. Yeah. The technology, all the technology is trying to do is make you more aware, like keep your attention. I yes. can't keep your attention yeah. on, on a particular platform or a particular yeah. tool. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's sucking up all of that, that energy. And I saw this beautiful picture once where someone was looking at their digital device at flowers and around them was all these beautiful flowers and it just showed you the disconnect that this person's flicking through these beautiful flowers but actually you've got a rose bush behind you that is beautiful that you can just turn that device and explore yeah yeah so so in terms of like um where we're at now as a as 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 a you know race yeah. it's very testing because we're being pushed beyond our even our, our, our human uh you know characteristics yeah no it's crazy i mean we're just living in a, a world within a world 
because you, yeah. you're just looking into this screen and like you say, you've got everything around you or you sit at a restaurant and then like, you know, there's couples and they're just both sitting. Sure. <laughs> they're not even focused on each other. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so that just shows you that in terms of like getting people to do stuff or to get people to be inspired. Yeah. Man, we're, look, we're, we're, we're in a generation where we're post-truth now. Well, we people say we've been in it for a long time where, you know, you can... You can find a professor on this earth to back anything up. Any kind of crazy <laughs> idea. You know, if it's a lie, you can get a professor to say that it's the truth. Yeah, yeah. Or you can get an academic or you can get a scholar. And look with COVID-19. Yeah, yeah. No, From exactly. 5G to, you know, the secret service to yeah, yeah. now mask. And it, it just goes on. Where does it stop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, it's, it's true. The truth. Who's telling the lies? What do we believe? No, it's, it's 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 true. And but what what um, sort of like personal? Because you said you said that you've um, sort of, you know you've taught over thirty thousand kids. It's, it's amazing, really. And what sort of general challenges do you find that they face? The kids that you've taught, you know, in terms of their personal what it is, upbringing is that, and things I, I like think that. Young people, where as I said before, this culture is. You can see it visually, like. You look yeah. at a music video, you can see them living life nice on the, on the music video, or you can live, mm-hmm. see them living nice through social media. But if you told a young person that you're going to get a GCSE or uh, a degree, you can't see that. Mm. And you don't see the impact of that. But if you gave young people money, some money, they can yeah. see the impact of that money. Yeah. So the challenge is that how do we make um, their... How do we show them a glimpse of their future yeah. now? Instead of trying to tell them, like, wait on in the future, you can have yeah. your house, your car, and so forth. Yeah. And that's the travesty of life is that some of the greatest people that we know, we don't yeah. see what they do behind closed doors. No, and exactly. That that's, yeah, yeah. You and, get and, yeah, and, yeah. And that's what I think the young generation is lacking. So when I was yeah. looking at you saying Bolt's, uh, training, yeah. I nearly cried, man. That guy was like, he was out from the break of dawn, yeah. running with these weights on his back and eating yeah. healthy food. And but if young people, young people are just looking him on the track, yeah, running the 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 the, the, the you know under ten seconds, yeah. No young person's watching what he's doing day in day out to lead to that success. Exactly. Yeah. Even our biggest musicians, yeah. The, the best musicians are the ones that can remind them, like, can record, like, five scripts of paper and recite it yeah. effortlessly. But yeah. you don't know that they've been practicing that day in, yeah. day out, walking in the shower, practicing those lyrics, on the streets, practicing those lyrics, so that when it comes on a stage and the delivery's on point, it's not just for the fact that they, they've got, you know, it's just on the stage. They've had this backlog of practice, and yeah. I think that in this generation, that is one of the biggest things of this world's crime. Yeah. Don't show the back end to the yeah. success. No, no, it's, it's it's so true, man. It's so true. Because, yeah, people, you see it all the time. Yeah, people just say, oh, you know, it look, everything just looks like it's just come out of nowhere. Everything looks like an overnight success, basically. Yeah. Because you haven't seen in between what graft was put in to get there. That's the funny thing, though, because I'm sure technology could be used to do that. I'm sure you could use some, like, augmented reality <laughs> video or something, you know, like, just yeah. <laughs> document the journey and then show them, well, this is what you need to be doing if you want to get there, you know, like, so here's your degree. It would be kind of interesting. I mean, you, you get show it. Nah, oh, sir, this is long, man. Yeah, this gonna... is... <laughs> no, 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 it's long, man. But that's the thing, man. It's it it is. So it's it's, it's complex in the sense that even if you yeah. did show them the regime, yeah. But yeah. that's what I'm saying. The reason why they're successful because they follow this regime. Yes. The reason why you're probably not successful because you don't have a regime. Yes, exactly. And it's like as a teacher, it's my my duty to show you like different types of regimes that you can have to try and get you to that goal. Yeah, yeah. And do you find that there are a lot of students like? Because I guess there's there's people from different schools of thought. There's some that just think, okay, I can't be bothered to put in the graft. 
but there is some that are kind of like oh how do i you know and like how do you go about helping helping those because that that's when you've got the hope because like someone who's saying okay i don't want to do it yeah they, 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 they might be a distant hope there that one day they change their mind to move on to the next stage where they're like how do i do it but then when you've got someone there that's so, like how do i how do you what how do you so went to the private that? school yeah. and in this private school these young people said sir don't tell me about my career i know what i'm doing in life right like, how come so oh, you know um my dad knows x y and z yeah. I am also, I go to this club after school that is, you know, heavily focused on that area of my career. Yeah. And then when you work in a state school, the kids are like, what do you want to do? in life? I don't know. I don't know. I don't yeah. I just don't understand. Yeah. And it comes down to sometimes is that young people need experiences beyond the classroom and beyond their family settings. Yeah. So how much time do you, you know, as a parent, you take your child to like the museum or to an in career insight day or to network with other like top professionals and you've got to try and break out of a mold to 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 to, to expand the horizon yeah. and i think that that's one thing that is a challenge for a lot of families and a lot of young people is that they're stuck in a mold they don't understand like the free the 50,000 feet view or they're not contact yeah. they haven't got that experience because if I was young, if I was, imagine if we were young and we were, like our parents said, you know what, play the computer games, man, because you can uh, you can come a bad boy game in the future. And yeah. that was never the case. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. You start talking about a game, they say go and read a book. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, or turn exactly. off the game because you're not know, finding out the electricity. Yeah, yeah. No, so, exactly. so when when we when we think about um, just the, the the narrow mindedness of a lot of how we think as society and even as traditional parents like just become a doctor become as you know teacher become a, a lawyer and so but actually now you can get the same money as being a programmer as a doctor or yeah, yeah, you, know, exactly. you can yeah. get a little social media job that can get you more money than a teacher yeah so the the game is changing uh jobs are changing and the the life that we live in is changing and and i think that you know, as humans, we want to be comfortable. We want to be like, we've always got this, um, we want to be secure in what we say to our younger generation. So we, we're risk averse to telling them the bigger, the bigger uh, risk that they can potentially yeah. take themselves. Yeah. So, so you know, that's, that's some of the issues that we face in terms of how we kind of disseminate this information to the younger generation. Yeah. And so give I mean, them yeah. unique experiences. Mm. No, I mean, because I look, you know, I, you, you're talking about that sort of, you know, 50,000 <laughs> feet view, view. And then I just look, I always look at like, what can I learn from, yeah, you know, my culture, but different cultures as well. And I sit there and I see, like, for example, in the UK, the highest average earners are the Chinese. Then followed by that are the Indians. Then it's sort of white and mixed races, actually. It's, it's kind of interesting when I looked at it. So I, I went to the um, Office of National Statistics and I was just looking at, how you know what are the disparities basically and then you find and i also find it very interesting like because you know like in stats they just ban all black people together but they don't realize that blacks have completely different cultures so you've got black african black caribbean people that are just yeah you know, not all, and not all black people yeah. and the thing is not all black people put their money in um in banks yeah so, or yeah. put their money in certain uh, situations. So that's another thing too, in terms of how we kind of, um, you know, how we kind of, um, you know, navigate within these spaces. But you're right. I think even looking at cultures, it's so it's so complex too yeah. because, yeah. you know, um, I, that that's the danger sometimes that we are considered to be like black is monolithic not all black people are the same and no, you know no. you've got black europeans you've got black yeah. americans you've got black yeah. africans black caribbean yeah. you've got black world people you've got all different types of black yeah. and i think that they all come with their different cultures uh, belief systems heritage yeah. and so forth that sometimes is not they might not see eye to eye oh yeah 100 percent. no no that, i mean <laughs> 
<laughs> I've seen it plenty. You but know? but there but also there is a misconception that they don't work together. They don't do they do they do a lot of working together. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of misconceptions that people generalize about these groups that they're not exactly, doing yeah. and, uh, and they are doing it because you know it's just that we just don't blow out we're just getting on with it now we're the hidden figures we, we just get on with it if you want to see it you could probably find it um out there somewhere but yeah you know going back to what you're saying around looking at different ethnicities and who gets it's, it's a very complex picture mm. yeah no i mean i just yeah I, like for me it's for me, a lot of it, uh, before I, for me, before I look to anyone else and I say, okay, change this for me, I say to myself, okay, look, what can I do to change my outcomes myself? Now, yeah. I know my mentality is not um, <laughs> the same as everyone else's, but what I'm saying is, is it boils down, it, for me, it boils down to a mentality because no one ain't going to stop me doing what I'm doing. And yeah. then they, they might make it harder, but... I, I, I'll go around it, I'll go under it, <laughs> I'll jump yeah. over it, <laughs> I'll just crash, crash straight through it, <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? And it's like, um, I feel like as a, you know, looking at the recent, um, you know, things that are happening after, you know, you know, especially in America, you know, all the protests and, and, and all that kind of stuff, I was like, I was thinking, because I did some research as well, which was interesting, man, because like, when I was looking at um, uh, black Americans versus um, foreign born blacks, it was so interesting, like the, the disparity in their earnings, you know, and I'm sitting there thinking, but wait a minute, they've all got the same skin color, so they should all be subject to the same, <laughs> do you know what I mean? They should all be like held down, do you know what I'm trying to say? But what was interesting was that I found like in the, when was it? It was a 2018 consensus, like the average, um, don't quote me on this, but it's about, it's, it's, it's around about this. So the average um, black American, um, so as average, because they banned it all together, like I said before. So the average black earned um, 41,000, something like that, right? Compared to 60,000 for the whites, right? But then when you extrapolated the, um, foreign born blacks, the Africans, to the ones born in the States, the ones in the States were just holding the whole thing back. So you had like the ones in the States were earning 38 grand as an average, and then the others were like sitting around where the whites were earning around 60, 55 to 60, something like that. So then you sit there and think, okay, like they've, we've all got <laughs> the same skin or darker. A lot of the Africans come over there darker. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, what are they doing different to what native born black people are doing in, in Europe, for example? And for me, it's like the difference is somewhere in the culture or the mentality or something like that. Because how are the, the, um, the Africans going in and getting... Yeah, I, I think I think it's, again, there, that, that, that there is a, uh, an issue in the sense that, you know, because you've got international blacks that will come to the UK and outperform. Yeah. Yeah, uh, black British, and we ask the question: Why is it yeah. a black British mentality? Do black British um, understand the microaggressions that occur in the workplace? Do they understand? Um, do they do they go through different experiences? So everyone shares different experiences. International blacks might not be privy to the microaggressions, or they might be privy to the microaggressions. Um, they might just think that do you know what where I've come from. Um, I haven't had these opportunities. I'm going to work hard at it. Um, so that sometimes there's a diff. The the mindsets are probably wired in a different way. Um, probably this the the organisations might look at them differently, which is wrong. So I think I don't want to cast a judgment on it to say that yeah. it might be the fact that you know the the locals might be. Uh, not lazy or whatever, because I think that's a typical narrative that people like to say, or oh, they, you know, they they haven't worked hard enough. It might just be that the system might be biased or playing the two off against each other, or or it might just be they favour these people because you know they they're a bit more submissive to our you know uh, work requirements and so forth. But I don't know, but yeah. I, but there would be something in there around. Uh, uh, mindsets 
around yeah. uh, the you know outperforming and so forth. It's wrong. It's wrong to do that. Uh, you know, but I'm not surprised because you know if you look at um, it's not just even in the black culture. If you look at Asian culture too, and, and especially yeah. um, in, in in you know the, the Indian culture. Yeah. And you can see that sometimes the same thing too, where somebody might be lived there all their life, might not get a great opportunity. Someone else came from overseas and worked in a in a in a more higher position. And you see it here anyway in the UK that four yeah. um, percent of um, out of the top tech companies in the UK is occupied by uh, four people, four people from bay backgrounds, uh, black and Asian, black and Asian ethnic minorities. And out of the four, all of them are international. So there's no British born right. in sitting in any of these top tech companies across uh, the UK. And, you know, why is that? I don't know, probably the, the BAME international talent might have a, uh, a clearer career path or yeah. they might over skip a few things that we're trying to fight up to get to. <laughs> we just don't know. So yeah. but I hear what you're saying, though. Yeah, no, because yeah, you said some interesting um, things there because um, I was sitting thinking back when I was young and in terms of the messages that, you know, I was getting as a youth. And then most of the time it was, you know, get into sports, get into um, like music. Those are like the kind of role models. So what I've, what I've questioned a lot is, is it, the fact that we just we just don't focus in on those type of areas like tech or being doctors or going into the professions because like when you look at Africans for example they they have a focus on on doing that but I'm just thinking about when I was growing up I weren't told to be a doctor or a lawyer or anything else I mean like when I was growing up I think I wanted to be a journalist but that was off my own back because I just liked writing. Do you know what I mean? But you didn't have that kind of message in there. Whereas, you know, when I look at um, uh, other ethnic minorities like, uh, uh, you know, Asian, Indians, and especially, you know, and Chinese, there is a real focus from the home on, look, you need to go out and get your education. You need to be, uh, it's expected you're a lawyer, you're a doctor, you're an accountant, you're one of those things. Because then I look at those industries where we focus, like such as music and sports, and we excel. So it's like, can't we replicate? Isn't it? Is it? A, is it? A, isn't it a question of maybe just focus where we're actually focusing our attention? Because where we focus our attention, we seem to do all right. When you look at sports, it's completely dominated by blacks. When you look at music, it's completely dominated by by blacks as well. Because there's a focus there. So I just wonder what your thoughts might be on that idea. Yeah, I think that, you know, in, in if you look at, uh, you know, sports and um, entertainment and music and so forth, we're heavily uh, featured in that. And, um, you know, the, the question might be asked is why we're not featured in a lot of these other uh, fields such as STEM. Why is it that where, where, are, the, where are the engineers, where are the kind of, Technologists, yeah. were the mathematicians, and so forth. Yeah, um, they are there. Some of them are there, but as I said, they don't get that platform to shine as we would like them to shine. Mm. Um, also, I think that again, some families just want the child to be a child mm. and you know experience stuff. They don't really push them into any kind of career. They kind of figure out themselves. Some families are very strict on what career you you should go down to, and so forth. And then, you know, mental health is a big issue in some of these families and, you know, neglect um, where there is a lot of, um, you know, pressure for the, for the child to perform. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously you can, you can get it in families where, you know, you don't have no expectation of the child and the child just thinks that, you know what, I'm not good at anything. Yeah. So I think that there's, it's, um, I think it has its pros and cons on how we kind of, um, you know, nurture and direct uh, children. I think you should just bend them into the passion that they have. Because a lot of the people in the tech field, believe it or not, a lot of the technologists that I work with don't have tech degrees. They're like historians, geographers, you wow. know, um, engineers or 
they've got all different type of degrees working in technology. So you don't necessarily need to have a tech degree. And all the people working in tech are not techies either. They're not programmers or coders. Some of them are working in finance. Some of them are working in uh, journalism. Some of them are yeah. working in, uh, you know, working out legal uh, structures and so forth. So yeah. what we're starting to see is that there's a, there's a, a cross-pollination of the skills that we were taught when we were young people and what we're doing now in these fields. Now, in terms of like where uh, blacks are, um, where, you know, where the black community heads towards, I think it's they head towards things that is easy accessible. Yeah. So when you even think about, um, you know, even like when you think about music and, you know, the, 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 the lot of the music that we gravitate towards because we can easily access it. Like, so whether it was garage right. back in the days or, you know, yeah. jungle or R&B, we can easily access that music. Yeah. Now, if you ask a young person of that day, could you easily access like some of the, you know, prestige music, whether it's classical or the different type of genres of music, it'd be hard to, yeah. because you know it's like to even pay for them instruments, it would be, <laughs> it'd be quite a lot. So imagine hearing Gar now we're only now hearing garage in an orchestra setting, thinking, wow, this is what we could have produced back then. But we now have access to all of those like 25 different pieces of instruments. Yeah. Or yeah. or even if even in the entertainment world, imagine if we had our own little YouTube channels back then. So I think that what you'll find with a, a, a lot of these conversations is, is that what we have access to and what we're exposed to, and I think now we're living in a golden age where young people are exposed to much more than those particular fields that they can actually go down. So it's a yeah. wider pool. And also parents are... I think parents are also cottoned on in the last 10 years that if I'm not having these conversations with my children, they might be, um, they might come back to ask them their soul searching question. Because if you're going to like a supermarket now, you can't tell a child to get a, a job at the cashier because you've got a self service checkout. <laughs> you know, so a lot of these, um, a yeah. lot of these kind of um, things that we'll be pushing our kids to. They no longer exist because they've been automated or they've been trained changed. If you yeah. go to McDonald's, you've got sort of going out to talk to someone and told a burger you can touch, yeah, touch, it, click yeah. and swipe, whatever it is. Yeah. So, you know, we've been forced as 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 community, as different races, to really think about what is the advice that we give to the next generation and yeah. how do we see ourselves in that? Yeah. And are you finding that there is more, is there a lot of involvement from the parents in the yeah, yeah, yeah. cycle? Def def definitely. Like, man, yeah. this is like, yeah, this is, this is the age where, you know, parents are really engaged and, you know, it's, it's not like back, as I said, different generations do parenting differently. And I think that yeah. a lot of communities have had bad uh, generational, generations of bad parenting. Yeah. But again, with the rise of social media and, you know, um, rise of, you know, exposure to, to content. Yeah. There is there is behavioural changes from parents that they, will, they won't be doing things back then what they're doing now. Right. Not to say that there is there, that bad, parent, bad uh, parent exists everywhere. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's still it's still rampant within society. Yeah. But in terms of the, the general population, in terms of looking after their child and making sure that the child is fed, um, uh, well, well looked after and, and accessing content that is going to help them with their mental health and mindset. Yeah, that, that, that's big. And I, I start to see, I've seen a massive shift in that. OK, no, that's really good. No, that's really good, man. And um, let's talk a bit about the MBE, actually. Let's talk a bit about you, your, your achievements, man, because I'm, you know, I'm personally very proud of that. So how did you, how did that all come about? How did you end up being awarded an MBE? Yeah, it was to my surprise because um, I think the normal route would be you have to, you know, get some people to validate your work that you've done in uh, a particular space or a particular set and the impact and so forth. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. I just got, I got um, poached from one of the um, ministers <laughs> in government at the time they saw the work that I was doing in Brixton in terms yeah. of connecting young people to like the top tech jobs um, and really bringing about a real change in the area. So I run the games industry to Brixton to, to talk to families about um, the opportunities of um, visual effects, animation, yeah. games and, and, and so forth. And then, um, you know, again, 
uh, I've been able to, you know, travel to different countries and part some of my knowledge. So yeah, to be recognised for that and and to be recognised at um, a level where you know it's a, it's a, you know it's a lifetime achievement. Yeah. Now, obviously, people might say, well, Mark, it's part of the empire and, you know, that Windrush generation, you're part of that, you know. And I just think that for myself, it, it, it was more of a personal thing that, you know, being a lighthouse in my community, yeah. it's more for the community. So it's more for the young people to, to see someone as myself reach to that height and to be able to, you know, show them that, listen, you can come from West Norwood. Yeah, that's and, it, you know, man. you can you can achieve you can achieve anything in the world that you want, yeah, irrespective of how people uh, might pigeonhole you into certain things. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think it's 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 a great achievement to the to the community that I serve and yeah uh, and 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 so on. Yeah, no, no, that's no, that's that's excellent, man. I was uh, really pleased when I when, when I saw that, man. Delighted when I saw that. And um, have you got a good example of like? A student that's just gone on to you know you've worked with that's just gone on to achieve yep so you got like um, Stormzy Stormzy's one of them so oh, oh cool yeah okay. he's gone on to um who's that South Norwood at the time Harris Academy um you got Santan Dave who's uh David he was at uh, Mitchum Eastfield so I've got a few musicians that have gone on some professional footballers that are now playing in the premiership uh-huh. Um, young people running their own businesses, setting up families and so forth. So, yeah, young people take many different directions and it's always heartwarming that I see them in the streets or, you know, I see them in my day-to-day life and they're able to, you know, say, you know, say even in even in school, probably at the, it goes back to what I've said before, in yeah. school, so I didn't see what you're saying to me, but now I've experienced life, looked at it from the 55 feet view, I've got enough respect for you, what you're saying to us and keep up the good work. Yeah. So it's just one of these things where I've seen lots of students um, really um, get to that next level. But again, it, it, it went back to, you know, once they left school, they kind of probably realised that they've got to put in the graft, they've got to put in the hard work and, you know, pursue whatever they, they, they wanted to do. And, and you know, as a, as a teacher, it's something you don't get to see that. No, once they no, leave that, okay. the, 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 the doors, you don't get to hear about anything. Yeah. So I've been really privileged in my um, life and in in, in 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 my teaching career to see some of those fruits. I won't see all of them. Probably I won't see eight percent of them. But yeah. at least I've seen enough to say that you know even some of the method to my madness in the classroom has rubbed off on them, and they they're now uh, doing the doing the best in life as as you know as we would expect. Yeah, no, that's great, man. And uh, just to round it off, what would you for the people watching? Um, it, it, I don't know who it could be. It could be a youth. It could be anyone. It doesn't matter what um, stage of life you're at, really. But what would be your sort of top tips to succeed? Yeah, the top tips to succeed is to um, fail. Learn, learn how to fail and see failures feedback. Some yeah. people don't want to fail my life. Line. You got my line there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. failures, failures, feedback, and you know yeah. you got to keep perfecting your craft to, to get you to a certain place. Um, also, kind of, again, you've got to own your narrative and your future and your destiny. And and if you can't do that, get people around you. Ask for help. One of the things I didn't do enough when I was um, when I left school. Ask for help and ask for advice and to go out and to experience new experiences. It's only when I was that like, late 20s, when I started to go to the city on my own and go to a lot of these kind of technology meetings and see what they were talking about. And then, you know, two years later, I'm at the front presenting to these same people that I was at the back shy to, to even ask a question about what they were talking about. So, yeah, it's just one of these things that, you know, find your tribe, Find the people that are going to build you up. Find the people that are going to, you know, help you to get to that next level. You might not know all the answers and you're not expected to know the answers, but people are out there. You've got different parts of that jigsaw puzzle that can help you on that on that, on that road. And um, and then lastly, I think also, um, you know, take life. Don't take life too seriously. I think, you know, a lot of people take life way too seriously. That affects their mental health. You know, um, they get frustrated with things. 
Um, they blow up when they don't need to blow up because they haven't had a. Uh, they haven't again. I always go back to San Diego. They haven't seen a fifty thousand feet view. They only see what's in front of them. Yeah. So it's just one of these things that those are the advice that I'll definitely give to to really support that next next where anyone's listening and anyone wants to go to that next level. Oh, that's great, man. That's great. And um, it'll be great just to refer to yeah back to you really. Have you got any like uh, websites links that I can put in to refer you know refer back to you? Yeah, so one of the things that you can do is like um, my my website is www.urbanteacher.co.uk for teaching. Uh-huh. If you want to hear more about like innovation coming from London and and especially coming from kind of like a, a more diverse lens, www.ukblacktech.com. And yeah, um, I'm on social media at both of the handlers, so feel free to reach out to us. And um, yeah, keep let's let's keep the conversation going. That's it. No, man, I'd love to get you. I feel like we haven't f- really finished up, man. I'd love to get you back on another one. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely. really good, man. Um, well, so this is Mark Martin, MBE. Um, yeah, I'm proud to have you on. And uh, no, no, thanks very much for your time, man. I really, really do appreciate it. And no, um, you're yeah, we have to catch up and, 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 and keep in touch for sure as well. And yeah, um, yeah no, um, I think we can expand on a few things that we discussed today. So I'm really. Uh, yeah, really delighted to, to get you here, man. So thanks, thanks again. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. No worries, yeah. man. I'll All speak right. to you soon, my man. Take care. All right, bye-bye, bye-bye.